Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to part 4 of my playthrough of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPGs version 2.40 update. And we've been transported into Muska's house and here's Toru. Toru says, Are you really going to be okay? And anyway, who are you? Do we want to hear a more detailed explanation from Toru? It'll take a little time. I kind of recall Luca saying at the end of the last video that he knew everything and now he's going to ask for an explanation, but uh, Toru doesn't call him out on it. Okay, so. You are living through the same time period over and over again. What can you tell me about? Can you tell me about what's going on in this house? Dangerous places, traps. In order to escape, I need information. Dangerous places. Well, rather than saying that, meeting Muska or any of the others is itself dangerous. Uh, from my perspective, as far as safe places go, there are none. Hmm. I'll uh, make sure I take that into account. Furthermore, the opponents are succubi, and they are something I'm fairly weak against. Ha <laughs> ha, Luca. Probably not best to fight them uh, face to face. So you, sh it would be best if you didn't enter into Muska or the others' rooms. You also want to avoid seeing them in the hallways. So then, as regards the means of escape. As for the key to the doorway, the front door, I already have it in hand. You have the key? So then can't you get out? Just with the key, it's no good. First of all, with the door itself, there's a magic trap set on it. If you touch the doorknob, then your power will be drawn out of you and you won't be able to move. So you need to craft something in order to nullify that effect. I am using honey to spread demon ashes upon a rubber glove. And if I do that, the doorknob trap doesn't activate. I see. And by the way, demon ash? Well, if you take one of these imps that come out of this summoning circle, and then you use holy water on them, they turn into ash. So, you kill an imp, you get ash. Got it. That's kind of a troublesome means, but I'll remember it. In order to escape, it might be new. It might be necessary. But that's not the tough part. If you open the door, there's another trap that activates, and I. Anyway, in order to avoid that, you need the black gemstone. And succubi hairs. Furthermore, not just one, you'll probably need three or more. The black gemstone keeps it is kept in in the uh, dresser in Venom's room. But in order to get it to get the key to the dresser, I 
to to being a, a human. So I ordered a pizza in exchange for another human's life. I got the key and I'm. It's all my fault. It's all right. Let's save the pizza guy. But it seems that a lot of things are necessary for the escape. There's the honey and the rubber glove. But setting that aside, this uh, demon ash and hair from three succubi is troublesome. Furthermore, in Venom's room, there's that black gemstone that they would need to get. In order to go get it, it'll be pretty dangerous. And that's when the doorbell rings. Oh no, the pizza guy, a delivery has arrived. Again, I've sacrificed an innocent person. Ah, oh, this is bad. If Venom answers the door, we won't be able to save him. You wait here. I'll do something about this. Can I really save the delivery guy from Venom? And even if I am able to save him, can we escape from the house? Well, whether we can do that or not, gotta go and do it. The pizza guy in question did go and ring the doorbell and all. So that explanation takes some time, but you do need to listen to the explanation or else you don't know what to do in the next loop. Oh, derp. I feel a presence beyond this. So we shouldn't do this. Head this way and I'll do right through here. And they're over there, actually. Ah, oh, we're too late. So, Venom is inviting the pizza guy up to her room. We've got to chase him down and help him. I actually played this game so I know where the room is. Yep. We're already too late. <laughs> Venom's raping the pizza guy and drawing out his essence. Oh, I thought I sensed a presence I didn't know of. By your appearance, you're a swordsman from another world. That brat. He used the magic circle to call you for it, didn't he? This has really gotten interesting. Surprisingly so. <clears throat> Let him go. <laughs> I ready my sword, but... That was the magic eye of... Uh, powerlessness, I guess we'll call it. Oh look, Luca's powerless. And... Without any recourse, I'm bent by Venom's power. Losing power in my body and can't even move. Hmm, what's this? I thought you'd be able to do at least a little. You don't have any tolerance against succubi magic, do you? No, oh, I've thought of an interesting choice to make here. I was about to eat this guy right in front of you, but if you offer your, your life instead, how about I let this guy go? Huh? So, if you take his place as my meal, I'll release this person. 
That's the deal. Well, how about it? If you want to save him, in order to save him, will you offer up your life? <laughs> My life? Hmm. So, if he or I take his place, I can save the pizza guy. But I can't just stand here because, uh, it's an ongoing process, as you can see. Instant by instant, he's drawing closer to death. So, how about it? If you don't decide quickly, it'll be too late. So, in his place... Or... Well... But we'd be able to save him like that. What should I do? I'll spoil it for you. You die either way. But if you pick the first option, you can save the pizza guy, at least in this iteration. And even Venom is pleased by your choice. So we'll do that. But we're going to die, so I'll see you at one. Bye now. Okay, we're back. So I returned. As expected, it without um, to just run through the plan without a plan was reckless. So it's clear that we won't be able to take on Venom head on. We need to figure out some means of, you know, slowing them down. Furthermore, there's the necessary things in order to escape from the house. It looks like some uh, prior preparation is necessary. Three hairs from Succubi. Maybe we should gather them here in the pocket of my old castle. Oh, good thinking. In order to handle those traps, It's not going to be good enough if we could just get normal succubi. Like those ones standing in front of us. Okay. Probably we'll need high class succubi hair to do it. And then the rubber glove and the honey and the demon ashes. Well, we can do whatever. Regarding the honey and the rubber glove, you know, whatever will work. The problem is the demon ash. So you can get it by defeating an imp. Yeah, that's what uh, Toru said to us. Speaking of imps, we've got one bouncing around right here. So then, let's try and gather the necessary items here in the Pokemao castle. Then we can get our way through Muska's house. But I haven't figured out a way to do it on the second run either. So I'm going to do a dry, dead second run in order to flip a flag that I need. So this is pretty much the same as last time. She tells us to lay on the bed. Chrome, do the brainwaves. Yep, I'll do the vital checks. You keep the gate maintained. Blah, blah, blah. Right up until we get transported, it's the same dialogue. This will be a little different. Wah! It seems Toru doesn't actually remember Luca in the various iterations. Like his time loop and our time loop are... It would actually be a kind of complicated interaction, wouldn't it? Well, let's not worry about it, huh? I've arrived. I wonder if I can do it well this time. Haha, <laughs> no you won't. Who are you? You're not a succubus and you're not a imp and you're not a demon. 
So, Luca gives a little quick explanation to Toru. Anyway, you just hide here. I'll somehow handle all of it. The pizza guy is coming. Moment by moment, it's coming faster. So, we've got to get Toru and the pizza guy to escape the house. The thing is, I haven't figured out a way to... Oops. Maybe I should have read that. There's an instant death here. Right here. That I don't know of any way to avoid unless you already know about it. Which means you already fell for it. Which means... Uh, well, Luca, you're gonna die. So, I'll see you at one again. Alright, now that that's out of the way. Okay, new iteration. Oh, same as an old thing. The first thing we need to do is talk to the Rami. Um, I have a request. Can I burn you until you are ash? Until you become ashes? No, of course you can't. I'll die, you know that? It's alright. In any case, time will roll back. So then, I'm, I'll uh, start the fire. Help me! <laughs> I'm going to be killed! Oh, yeah, she's objecting pretty strenuously. Which is to be expected. If I uh, force the issue and turn her into ash, uh, yeah, I guess that would kind of strike my conscience as well. But wait, what I really need is a truly demon ash. If I can in deactivate the doorknob trap, wouldn't that be fine? Alright, if you won't let me fry you, tell me this. Do you know someone who is knowledgeable in the deactivation of magic? Well... Mephisto Sensei should be knowledgeable about that. I answered your question, so you won't burn me, right? Mephisto Sensei? Since when is she a Sensei for you imps? But it's true, Mephisto seems like the type who would be knowledgeable. Let's go uh, ask Mephisto about breaking the doorknob. Okay, then. But there's other stuff we need to do. We'll hit Mephisto, of course, but... Lilith and Lilim are here. We can play Othello with her, but... This new option at the bottom has appeared since Promising's gate operation has started. And this is asking about items that'll be necessary for the operation. So, you want our hair. But, to give it away for free. That'll make us look cheap. In exchange, would you listen to our request? Hmm, okay. Depending on the content of it. Today at 4 o'clock, the Mao is going to have a tea party. It happens once a week, and she really looks forward to it. Uh, to say the Mao, of course, that's our ages, Mao. Her Majesty Alice Fees the Eighth. Oh, Alice, Alice Thromelia, right? The fact that her true identity is Alice Fees the Eighth is uh, pretty well known amongst our comrades already. But, although it's weekly, there aren't many guests most of the time. She doesn't say anything, but she's really disappointed in them. 
So then, we'd like you to gather guests for the tea time. It should be three of them. We want you to use your judgment to pick good guests. I get guests for a tea party? Yes. Go ahead and ask three people and invite them. If the Mao... If they are people that it seems like the Mao would like, that's points up for you. Call them brownie points. And after the tea time, if the Mao is pleased by it, as thanks, we'll give you our two hairs. Okay, got it. Invite three guests. And the tea time is at four. If we can get two hairs together, it's got plenty of value in and of itself. So let's gather some good guests and get this tea time going. So first of all, let's invite Alice. Very well. As the 16th model, I'll accept the invitation. So Alice accepts the invitation. And this is one. There's two more participants to gather. Most of the participants act a lot like Rosario well. Hey, come to tea time. You think I'm going? Do you want me to die or something? Yeah, a lot of people will refuse. Basically saying something to the order of, I'm going to die if I go. Which is, uh, I don't know, I get the feeling like Alice the Eighth is being cast up as way more evil than she actually is. I didn't play the visual novel, so maybe I'm missing some context. What I've seen of her is she's whimsical and kind of funny, actually. Anyway, um, Alice. Ah, yes, we were going to talk to Mephisto about deactivating a magic doorknob. So she's here giving a lesson to her students. Let's invite her to tea time. It's been a long time since she's invited me. Very well, I'll accept the invitation. So Mephisto can come to the tea time as well. With this we've got two, just one more participant to find. But also we want to ask about the items that'll be necessary. So, some treasure that can nullify a magic. Of course, there are many that exist. There's magic that can nullify or deny people who touch it. And it's a pretty major magic, actually. So, there is a pretty consistent conception of magic items that deny such effects, such as, for in, such as things like the uh, gloves of magic cancellation being a prominent example. Magic cancel gloves, huh? Where are those so sorts of things? It does take a bit of work to get your hands on it. Well, it's... It's pretty frequently used, but I don't have it one myself. If I did carry around such a thing, I'd be ashamed as a magician myself. It'd be acknowledging that I couldn't, you know, nullify such magical effects with my own power. So, those of us who have the power probably won't be carrying any such things around. So I should be looking for some underling-like type person. So I guess I'll go searching. Just one more hint I'll give you. It would be best to pick on... to uh, talk to somebody who's got sticky fingers. Sticky fingers? 
why? These magical traps that that uh, immobilize people that touch them. If you want to nullify that, you're probably trying to commit some kind of crime. And that's what they're largely used for. So, what type of person do you think that... do you think would use that... need that kind of item? It's definitely someone who's, uh... the type of person who... Uh, has low moral fiber, let's say. So then, sticky fingers, underling. Huh. Well, sounds like somebody good for nothing. So, amongst my allies, do I have a good for nothing, huh? Well, let's take a look. Now, you may have recalled. Way back near the beginning of the last video, we got an item from the Sphinx when we answered her riddles. riddles. She's got nothing special to say, but we can challenge her to the riddle game. Now that Operation Prom... no. The Promistine Gate operation has commenced. It's changed a l This uh, dialogue here has changed a little bit. Blah blah blah, three questions. This hasn't changed. So then, the first. Correct is Neko no Koko Neko Shishi no ko, Kojichi. The second one is one third, and the third is Mu. Ha! Suck it! All the answers were correct. I'm going to take the reward. This is just. So we got the Labyrinth Book Ultimate Edition. With this, I might be able to slow Venom down. So let's continue our other preparations. Do y'all remember that big old explanation? Open the book towards them. Someone opens the book, they get sucked into a labyrinth and they have to solve a bunch of puzzles. Uh, oh, I've got one more thing to check. Hey, good for nothing. I'm just managing uh, the stock in the uh, kitchen here, yeah. I'm not doing anything wrong. So suspicious. Anyway. Ask her about useful items. Oh, gloves of magic cancel. Yes, I've got some. Huh? Yeah, you see, they're pretty useful. I put them to a lot of... Put, all, put them to a lot of good opportunistic this and that. So, would you lend them to me for a little bit? Well, lending them to you for free, though. In exchange, would you give me a mouthful of, uh... We'll say it's essence she's acting asking for. Hey, this is my beloved item, and I'm going to keep be giving it to you. Lending it to you. Can't you at least give me that much? Oh, uh, well. Come on, it'll be all right. I just need a mouthful of it. And you'll think of it fondly afterwards, too. We're both lucky with this. Yeah, win-win, sure. So, what should we do? I'll... Uh, well, actually, we don't have a choice. We do need that item. I'll cut to afterwards. Well, I had a feast. And you enjoyed it too, didn't you? I need the item. So then, I'll lend you the gloves of magic cancel. Be sure to return them when you're done. Well, if we have that, the doorknob trap we should be able to avoid. So this is one step in the s towards the success of the operation. So we need to continue our preparations in order to get out of that house. But we're done for right now. Let's move forward to 2 o'clock. 
So, so tasty. So, so tasty. This is Kitsune. Everybody remembers Kitsune, right? They're eating here. But I don't care what they're eating. Hey, Kitsune. Will you come to the tea time with the Mao? Oh, that sounds like fun. I'll go, I'll go. Kitsune Senpai. You're afraid of nothing, are you? So, now Kitsune is on the list. And now the chance to invite people is gone. I haven't inv tried to invite everybody in the castle, but most people will reject you. And Alice sees actually. And Alice Romelia actually likes most of the people you invite. But I have found somebody she, that she doesn't. And that's Candy. Now she was here at one, but she's not here anymore. Anyway, even if you invite two good people and one bad person, you still get the hairs at the end, in case you're curious. I wonder if there are three people that she wouldn't like and things would blow up in your face. But I haven't tested that much. On to the next thing. Hey, I need to go upstairs. Yeah, yeah, you're tired up. The cow Mao is actually a person that you can invite to tea time. Alice from Erylea likes her. Oh. Before doing this on this floor, I'll show you why I'm doing that on that floor. So this is Witch Succubus, remember her? So you want to have tea with me? Well, no, not really. I want a hair. Well, I can't just give it away for free. The hair of a high-class succubus fetches a high price, after all. So you need to prepare a compensation appropriate to that. So then, an alchemical item, the Raquel no Bakiseki. That's a... I don't know what Raquel it means, but it's a type of exploding stone, it says. If it's not a first-rate alchemist, then you can't form it properly. It's a tough, uh, tough item to get your hands on. Even I have a difficult time forming it, forming it so that it's stable. Okay, Raquel no Bakuseki. If I bring me one, I got it. I'll go take a look. So, if it's an alchemy item, then speaking to an alchemist is the number one way to get it. So let's take a look. See if we can find something that we can exchange for one of witch's hairs. And that's why we need to get to this floor in the first place. Because Lucia's here. Oh, ha, this is good. There are many experiments that I'd like to be able to progress. If only I had an unlimited amount of time. It's not that great. Ha ha ha, Luca. So we can ask her for stuff. Well, if you want something that's valuable, why don't you help me out with my alchemical experiments? Alright. This will take an hour. And we'll get something out of it. Okay, you'll help me out. In that case, get pour your magic power into this crystal. We continue these experiments. Thanks to you, we got a good quality of uh, fire crystals out of it. So, to you as well, I'll give you one. Oh look, it's a Raquel no Bakuseki. So if you throw that, it'll create a small-scale explosion. Well, if you're dealing with a high-class... A high-class succubus, though, it won't be very useful, though. But we got our hands on it. 
it's, it's a bit suspicious to think that it might be useful in slowing down Muska and then. Yeah, I didn't really mention this, but a ton of characters around here will give you an item or two. Well, I'll give you an item. Like Vanilla will give you one. Um, yeah, something completely useless. Down here, Daimyomi will give you one. But they're all useless except the ones I'm showing you. Anyway. Hair. I want hair. Oh, it looks like you got your hands on the Raquel Nobaksiki. As promised, I'll exchange it for one of my hairs. So we get a hair from which? This is the first. I just need two more succubus hairs. Okay, thanks, Witch. And this is Succubus. She's just here at three. Those kids, where did they run off to? After I went through all the trouble to gather all these uh, t t potatoes. Ah, uh, no. It's my problem. Do you want to eat some potatoes? Yeah, no. I want items. You want one of my hair? In that case, I do have a little task to request of you. You're probably thinking it's about this, these potatoes, aren't you? And you're right, it's about the potatoes. <clears throat> We've got three potato bugs. And I prepared these potatoes for their three o'clock <laughs> three o'clock snack. They should be somewhere in the somewhere in the castle. So won't you go and call all three of them? Okay, got it. Make sure to, that you complete it before four o'clock, please. And if you can gather them, I'll give you a hair. Great. And this. This is something I didn't want to touch. But I'm trying to show you all of the succubus hairs that you can gather, so this sub-event exists. Well, Loki, you've come at a good time. We're ha we three are having a sexy showdown. I quit. I just quit. Blah, 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 we're competing in blah, blah, blah. Blah blah beauty, blah blah blah. Alright, I'll watch. So it does its thing. How amazing. So it's time for a vote. So, amongst the three of us, who do you think is the number one sexiest? If you pick me, blah blah. The one you should pick is me, blah blah. Look, I'll tell you what I think. Fulbjord, you are an insufferable narcissistic bitch. Est, you endangered the entire world in order to satisfy your sexual appetites. I hate you moderately less than full view up because I kind of think that you didn't mean any harm by it. Kind of. And Alma Elma. Alma Elma. I thought you were better than this. That's what I have to say about that. Anyway, you can get a succubus hair from this competition. You can actually get it no matter whom you pick, depending on whether you're prepared for it. I'm going to pick Alma Elma because, well, because. So it turns out Luca's vote was the tiebreaker and Alma Elma wins. First place, Alma Elma. Yay. So I'm number one. I'm so glad. Right, sexy showdown's over. Great. If you pick Fulbua and ask Fulbua for a, a hair afterwards, She'll give it to you. 
in order to get a hair from Est, according to what I've read on the Japanese wiki, you need to get the pizza from Gob, do this sexy showdown, and pick Est, and then speak to Est and ask about the pizza, and then ask for a hair. If you want one from Alma Alma, well, you do what I just did, but she won't give it to us here, I think. Yeah, she says here that you can't give it away freely or lightly. But I did need to do that. Anyway, we're... Ah, uh, uh, yes. It's three o'clock. Those three aren't the only succubi in the castle. In fact, there are nine. Check it out, it's Morgan. So we ask three necessary items. Oh, you want a hair from me, do you? If you hear out my request, I'll give you one. Don't tell me you want my uh, <clears throat> essence. Oh, is that what you want? In that case, I'll draw you, suck you out as much as you want. Uh, no, I think that's no good. What's the request you had in mind? So, I'm here being your ally and everything. You understand how this is a good, proper, upright mission I've got here, right? And the mission is to watch over your team and to earn you guys' trust. Uh, is it alright to just say that directly to us? Isn't it alright? My big sisters didn't tell me not to tell you. You know, when you're trying to win over somebody's trust, you should be a little clandestine about it. Uh, the thought didn't cross Morgan's mind, I guess. Well, her sisters are pretty clever, so they probably saw this a million miles away. And they decided upon it because they decided, well, not to hide it. So, that being the case, I've got this mission to earn your guys' trust. And my sisters are always nagging me about it, you see. Are you doing it well, they ask. Are you not causing trouble, they ask. Lilith and Astro. They just worry too much. So, I want them to hear it from Luca's mouth. The fact that I'm doing it well and all. Yeah, <clears throat> from me. Right, right. Up in the snow region, Asta's hanging out. So, that's my request. Go tell her, and I'll give you one of my hairs. I don't really mind, but isn't that a bit deliberate? You think so? Morgan, you used to be a bitch, and now you're just so naive. It's cute, though. Well, if she herself thinks it's okay to try this, uh, great. We can get a hair, probably. Let's go talk to Astaroth. All right, here's a potato bug. Succubus is calling you. It's time for your three o'clock potatoes. So, Nobi heads off. And you know how you shouldn't be able to recruit Astaroth yet? Yet she's still in the castle. Shenanigans. Shenanigans are happening, that's what I... What do you need of me? Uh, about Morgan. She's doing a good job around here. Like, uh, she gives, she's good at giving food to Nuriko and such. And we totally trust her. Yeah. She's a very valuable ally of ours. Morkin requested that you say that, didn't she? Um, well, as expected. 
<laughs> we didn't troll. We didn't fool her at all. Well, for her, she's doing pretty well. I was worried at the beginning whether she'd be able to do it well. Um, why are you guys? Tr why are you guys helping us out anyway? Well, as my little sister told you, we want to earn your trust. We want to become your allies, holding the same, uh, holding the same goals as you. Allies with us. You're not trying to take advantage of us? Look, things like tricking you or brainwashing you. If we thought that that would work, we could do those. But that's not really being a comrade of yours. And we won't be able to enjoy the same... the same camaraderie that way. That's what the Dark Goddess thinks, and what we think. And what we think as well. So, enjoying some true camaraderie, huh? Yes, sharing the same fate and the same... and walking the same path. So we hold the th same thoughts, and we try to... And we try to take grasp of the same future, you know? Alice V is the 16th, and the hero, Luca. For us, your power is necessary. And if we don't have it, then we won't be able to overcome the battle to come. But why do you value us so... like so? To be quite honest, isn't she overestimating our value? Asroth and her sisters are affiliated with the Dark Goddess's, you know, army and everything. And they are extremely powerful. The Dark Goddess herself, of course, and also the six ancestors, ancestors, said to be the pinnacle of all monsters. All of us put together, we really don't even come to the level one of the six ancestors. We received a prophecy that you would become the destroyer and bring victory to us. A prophecy. Those are all hogwash. <laughs> the one who gave the prophecy was the White Rabbit. The White Rabbit did that? So, the White Rabbit was able to read some omens for the Dark Goddess's armies. And our presence would be their key to victory. The White Rabbit was able to observe the world lines where we would win. And there, you guys were amongst the allies. Is that not enough for us to... Uh, is that en not enough reason for us to monitor you guys? And think highly of you? In the end, if we tried brainwashing or deceit, that would be risky. But didn't you try that back at the beginning? Yeah, yeah, we really did. But after, you know, swapping fists with you a few times, we noticed. Your guys and our and our interests actually align pretty well. 
Furthermore, you guys is true potential. You won't be able to draw that out if we tried brainwashing you. In the war against the heavens, it's going to come to a, a closely fought battle. If you can't pull out 100% of your power, it's no good brainwashing. No. Brainwashing is no good in order to bring out 100% of your power. The power of your thoughts and your hopes in striving for the future. Brainwashing that steals your will of you won't let us get, won't let us uh, harness that. Mm, truly, that is true. So that's why what we wanted you to know. What we're thinking and the way we're valuing you and our ideal, you know? So that being the case, we sent Morgan over to you in order to have you guys understand us one step at a time. I'm not convinced, and I don't think I should be accepting everything she says, but even so, for the, the main gist of her argument doesn't seem to be a lie. But in any case, we fulfilled Morgan's request. All right, what do you need of me? I want hair. You want my hair? If that's all, oh, think not. No problem at all. And so we get one of Astaroth's hairs. With this, I've got two. Just need one more succubus hair. But is this okay? No conditions at all, just giving it away? <laughs> this is cheap, if we can buy your trust with it. One single hair. Going forward, we're going to be getting in some big fights together, after all. So then, we got a hair. Let's continue with our preps. Now, Priestess here is uh, watching a mushroom. Oh, there's a branch here, or something. What are you doing? What? You can't tell by looking. I'm taking care of growing plants. That's a mushroom. Growing plants, you say? Isn't that a mushroom? Yeah, fungi aren't plants. But anyway. We need to speak to Priestess. Ask her about the necessary items. Some means of slowing down Muska and her group. It may be difficult to use, but how about this? Priestess gives us a small medicine bottle. This is... Inside is a powerful sleeping potion. It's specially formulated and extremely effective. Before, I was going to make the queen drink it, but nowadays, I just drink it. Anyway, give that, give that medicine a try. If you use it well, whoever drinks it should sleep for a while. So we get the queen's sleeping potion. Looks like it'll be tough to get them to uh, drink it, but thank you. I'll try and use it. Please don't drink too much of it, you know. It's habit forming, after all. Uh, no, I'm not going to drink it. Priestess, you're a weirdo. 
All right, hard to use, but if we can get them to drink it, it should be useful. Potato bug. Succubus is calling. It's time for your three o'clock potatoes. I love potatoes. So Nanaha runs off. Potato bug. <laughs> Succubus is calling. Time for your three o'clock potatoes. Yay, potatoes. Let's see, I'm about done. Yeah, just about done. Potatoes, potatoes. <laughs> potatoes. Munch, munch. Eat till you're full. Potatoes are tasty. Oh, you're such cute kids. Compared to these girls, the folks of the village, lately they're just openly avoiding potatoes. Anyway, thank you. As promised, here's my hair. And we got a hair from Succubus. Alright, with this I've gathered three. The gathering of the Succubus hairs is complete. But like I said, I was going to do all of them if possible. Kya kya, QQ. Alright. Oh, you went and told her. As promised, I'm giving you a hair. With this, I've got three. Hey. <laughs> hey, I've scored some points with this. Maybe. I can get through the end this week without submitting a report. You have to write reports on us. Anyway, got a sucker this hair. Let's do our other preparations. Now I need to go to four o'clock. Let's play with Asarad and Morgan. No, Morgan and Nuriko. Fish and apples. Anyway, at four o'clock. Ah, yes, remember tea time? We can go to Alstromeria's room. Now it's four o'clock. It's time for the tea time. So, Alstromeria's tea party starts. As the current Mao, I've accepted your invitation. I'm sure that you know, but to introduce myself, I'm Ali I am the 16th Mao, Alice Fees. <laughs> Mao is together enjoying some tea. This is a rare thing, but it happens. Oh yes, after these introductions you'll hear a sound indicating whether Alice Dromelia likes it or not. So Alice Dromelia likes Alice. And here's Mephisto. It has been a very long time, Your Majesty. I, Mephisto, have accepted your invitation and come here. That's the, the good sound. Oh, Mephisto, isn't it? Even up to now, I see you that you I see that you've been able to walk the world well. Kitsune. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting me. Wow. There are so many tasty looking candies and fruits. My, what a cute fox. Perhaps it would have been best that I prepared some fried tofu. So, the tea party proceeds with a bright mood. Alice from Alia seems satisfied. So then, let's wrap this up. This has been truly been a fun tea time. And with that, the tea party is 
Dismissed. So then, let's report to Lilith and Lilum. Yep, that's the next thing to do. Just trying to get this all straight. I do have to keep a list. Thank you, Her Majesty was so pleased. And we've got to give you what we promised. We get a hair from Lilith and a hair from Lilim. But this we've got three. Jeez, look, I thought you could count higher than that. Remember I told you we could get a hair from Alma Alma? Well, welcome. Working part-time here sometimes. You voted for me in the sexy showdown. So then, I barely won. Like I said, afterwards I would give you a reward. So what do you want? Or what do you want done? <laughs> Obviously you can ask for her for sex, that happens all the time. But if you ask for her hair, she'll give you her hair. What? You just want a hair? Is that alright? I'm a little disappointed. And we get a hair from Alma Alma. With this, three. Yeah, sure. So that's how you get Alma Almas. Pick her in the sexy showdown and then talk to her at four o'clock. Alright, we're ready. Well, almost ready. We come into Promise Dean. Well, now, let's begin the Promise Dean's gate operation. What is this out of the blue? So, Luga explains the situation. Oh, you're in a time loop. And you're on a rescue operation, crossing world lines. I understood, this is really interesting. I'm going to call Chrome right away. So, this is doing this. Frederica is washing Promestine's clothes because apparently all researchers can't take care of their own damn housework. But anyway, anyway, anyway. All the preparations for the operation are complete. We can go anytime. I want an item that we're gonna need. Hmm, regarding an item that could slow down one of Muska's group. If it's anything hand fake, there won't be any effect. So probably we should go aroundabouts. Rather than stopping them front on, doing it a bit indirectly. So the So then, how about this? Promising holds out a small device. This is called USB memory. It's a recording device that's used in Muska's world. Why do you know that? Isn't it a other world technique, technology? Well, there is what I understood from the analysis of the smartphone in question. And the same scale of machines we've also been able to discover in the Tarotaros. No, the same, uh, not scale. Specifications. The same specification of the machines. So we've got these devices that conform to the specifications of things in Muska's world. I don't know why we were able to dis discover them in the Tartaros, though. Anyway. What's important is the contents of the USB memory. In it, I've entered in a special computer virus. If you 
take this US memory and insert it into a port on a PC over there. Then it should infect the thing and it will be properly usable afterwards. We got a computer virus. PC, you say. You mean one of those computers? I'm kind of bad with machines. I wonder if this will go well. Just a bit. Why don't I test it on that computer there? No, no, don't do that. Anyway. I wonder if there is a PC in Muska's house. Well, if we use this well, perhaps it will slow somebody down. Alright, that's everything. Let's start the operation. So then, lay down on the bed. Chrome, brainwaves. Yeah, vital checks for me. You do the gate maintenance. Understood. Entering the coordinates. So then, Promestine and Chrome, in a short time, get all the preparations underway. Same as before, and also the time before that. Let's skip. I think this instruction with Torah rules would be the same as well. I'm here, I wonder if it'll go well. Yeah, it's the same. So, hide here, I'll take care of everything somehow. Okay, in order to escape from this house, somehow we need to get our hands on the black gemstone. It's said that it's upstairs in Venom's room. We're gonna meet some dangers in doing this, but we gotta go get it. But if we waste time, the pizza guy will show up. So as fast as possible, let's do the preparations for our escape. So, we're well, going to check the fridge. There's a bunch of beverages. If I mix in the sleeping potion into a beverage, afterwards, it may slow down one of Musa's groups. But I've only got enough of the potion to mix into one beverage. Which beverage should I mix the potion into? You can process of elimination this, and I kind of did. I got it on my second try. Cola. Don't you think Musco would be an orange juice drinker, though? Anyway, mix it into the cola. If somebody gr drinks it, that would be good. Okay, remember I got killed by Musco up here? Oh, that's right. If I go up the stairs like this... I'm gonna run smack dab into Smuska. And that's not going to go well for me. Maybe I should hide somewhere. Is there someplace good? Not the bathroom. Oh, um, well that's a bathroom and this is a just a toilet. Anyway, don't go in the bathroom. That's my advice. Okay, here I'll just wait for Muska to pass by. So we hide our breath here in the toilet. And we hear Muska's footsteps as she descends the stairs. She passes by the kitchen. Well, passes by the toilet, passes by the kitchen. Looks like she's gone. We hear the front door close. Probably the, the possibility is high that Muska has left the house. Great, good. Now, before going and trying to grab a black jewel stone, gem, the black gemstone, this is a computer, is it? Oh, come to think of it, Promising gave me a computer virus. Maybe if I put it in here, it could slow Nemea down? All right, put it in. Okay, let's give it a shot. This device, and here's a port. If I put it in, that'll be good, right? 
It, it was called a USB, right? It's got a hole on it that looks like appropriate for the USB stick. So we stick the device in. Ah, weird, it's not going in. Have I got it upside down? Okay, now I flip it over, try it again, and again it doesn't go in. What's going on with this thing? This should be the port it goes into, I think. Once again we flip it upside down and this time it slides in perfectly. So the first turning, the way it was turned the first time was correct. But why didn't it go in the first time? Because you're a klutz? I don't know. Anyway, with the device set in, the a lamp, LED I suppose, probably, that was built into it, starts flashing several times. Now the virus is uploading, probably. And then, several seconds later, the lab's blinking cuts out. Looks like it stopped, huh? I wonder if it'll really be good for what we're trying to do here. Well, my uh, job here is done. Let's. L There's no more use for us in this room. Okay, then, cool. Who's this? Venom! No, no. She's Venom. You're Luca. Okay, so Venom was in her room as expected. In order, we've got to. If we can't get through this, uh, this trial, we can't escape. Oh, going by your appearance, you're a warrior from another world, huh? I just gotta say, Venom, I like your cute little dress shirt. Ah, uh, but anyway. Further, it seems you're stronger than you look. And the one who called you forth was probably that brat. Hey. I just said I like that shirt. Why'd you change into another one? Or rather, a lack of one. So then, what's your purpose here? Did you come here to try your hand at beating me? <laughs> this is a rough situation, but I can't run away. We've got to get the goods in question and, you know, do something about Venom. Okay, you can fight her or you can bring out the Labyrinth book. Venom, this is a challenge for me. A challenge from a hero. So, we face the book at Venom and open it. The magic of the book should draw her into a labyrinth dimension. This is an item that I have don't know about. It seems a type of other other dimensional transmission magic. The place where we are going is a labyrinth where that will test the limits of your knowledge. If you can do it, use your intellect to escape. So I take do this and challenge Venom. It's possible for her to just destroy the whole labyrinth and not do the riddles, but in that case, this isn't going to slow her down hardly at all. I just hope that she stays in the labyrinth for at least a little while. Interesting. 
that's a transparent provocation, but I was just bored at this very moment. I'll accept your little hero's challenge. So you just wait for my return. And just like that, Venom is sucked into the, disappears into the book. So she's trapped by the document and has been sent into the labyrinth. Yeah, who's going to be waiting for your return? Jeez. Anyway, let's search for that black gemstone or other, or whatever. If we don't hurry, the pizza guy is going to arrive at the house. Furthermore, this uh, way of slowing down Venom isn't with the book of lab the, with the labyrinth book isn't going to last forever. As fast as we can, we've got to get the gemstone, which is the key to our escape. It should, without a doubt, be somewhere in this room. Okay, this is the key. I discovered an old key under the bed. Which means Toru had to sacrifice the guy in order to find an old key under the bed. Phenom wasn't even carrying it. But what do I use it on? Let's continue searching the room. Oh, the dresser is locked. How about this key? Use the old key, it opens. We get a strange gemstone. This is the black damn gemstone, isn't it? All right, we've got the item that I, I've got the item I was looking for. All right, nothing more to do here in Venom's room. So let's escape. I imagine Nemeo would do something if I hadn't virus her computer there. So, the pizza guy hasn't arrived yet, but it's about time for him to ring the doorbell. As fast as we can, without letting our guard down, we've got to continue the plan. So then, next we meet up with Toru in the underground room. After that, we escape from the house. And that's it. That's Muska. But Muska isn't moving. Could it be she's sleeping? Pinch her cheeks. You drank the cola that we put the sleeping potion in, did you? She's totally fallen asleep. But we don't know when she's going to wake up. We better not get too close. Uh, no. Pinch her cheeks. Poke her in the eyes. Make her make a funny face and then take a picture of it. Hey. Ah, oh, if only. Alright. I, I got the black gemstone or whatever. So this will be good. Yeah, this is it. Just how did you... Alright, anyway. Just come along with me. Before the pizza guy here, we've got... Before the pizza guy gets here, we've got to escape this house. Alright. We've met up with Toru. Alright. We've done everything we need to do in this house. Let's escape through the front door. In case you're curious, he doesn't show up on the status screen. You know, in Succubus Prison, he never did get a name. And I find Toru an interesting one to pick. It means transparent. Which is kind of a joke on the kind of person he is. They have this saying in Japan. That people of his type are so... Have so little presence that they don't even cast a shadow. And he's called transparent. So... Let's get out of this house. 
turn the doorknob. All right. Let's wear the magic cancel gloves that I prepared. And we turn the doorknob. All right, we can get out. Wait, just a minute. There's another trap still. We've got to prepare the gemstone. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. I was just about to space out and open the door. I don't know how to use the succubi hair that we got, but I did remember at the very last second and it pulled me back. We pull the mysterious gemstone from our pocket and take a look at it and somehow it seems to be releasing light, some kind of reaction. This is, you're carrying succubi here, right? Bring them close to the gemstone. Okay, I'll give it a shot. The mysterious gemstone. When you bring the three prepared succubi hairs to it, it draws the int it draws the hairs into it, and the gemstone starts shining with a with a rainbow light. Rainbow color of light. Okay, with this we've done what we need to. Probably. So then, after this, if we open the door, the trap will be... Alright then, I'm opening the door. We prepare ourselves, and we open the door, and we do it. Wah! The instant we opened the door, the trap activated, but in resistance to it, the mysterious gemstone shines. It seems like the trap's magic power is fighting with the protective power. Immediately afterwards, in the end, the trap, as we watch, disappears. outside. The sun is completely going down and it's really dark. I thought he ordered this at five. Well, never mind that. And we were standing outside the house. Finally, we've managed to escape from the demon's house. Uh, oh no! Unexpectedly, Toru cries out. It seems the pizza guy is right in the entryway. Right now, he's about to go ring the doorbell. No, don't! Stop! Don't ring the doorbell! Toru, in a panic, runs towards the pizza guy. Um, this is a delivery from Mountain Pizza. Are you one of the residents? Uh, yes, yes. I'll take the pizza. The price is... This is sufficient, right? Yep, thank you very much. In exchange for the pizza, he takes his payment. So then he hops onto some two-wheeled propulsion, self-propelled device, and it runs on out of there. What really surprises me is it's not a two-wheeled self-propelled device, it's literally the word for motorcycle. But why does Luca know that word? So then, somehow we've managed to save the pizza guy too. This incident is concluded without him getting into the demon's house. So the things we needed done, we've done, and we breathe a big sigh of relief. And as it happens, we hear Elko in our, in our head, a, no, a voice that we know well. 
Luca, can you hear me? In our side, we've confirmed that the space-time phenomenon has disappeared. Is that so? Everything's gone well then. And over here, we've saved Toru as well as the pizza guy. So, in accordance with that, the Toru on the other side has had his regret disappear. So then everything's ended. After this, is, I just need to return home. So then, we're going to pull, be pulling you back, Luca. For just a little interval here, please don't move. Right, I got it. Hey, hey. To whom are you speaking? Uh, no, it's on my side. I'm going to be returning to my home world. Right. I don't know what you're talking about, but truly, thank you. To think that I could get out of here alive. And furthermore, without sacrificing anybody. That's right. With this, this is a perfect escape. In this case, any number of times. Mm -hmm. What is it? Is there still something? No, no, it's uh, this side. It's nothing. You need to return to your rightful place. So, I too am returning to my rightful place. That's right, Toru as well needs to return to his home in this world. Hopefully, he will never have to deal with this, so we'll never get wrapped up in this kind of incident again. So, in my vicinity, the space-time gate appears. With this, finally, we can say goodbye to this world. So then, take care. Yeah. Toru says that and turns his back and, surprisingly, heads to the entryway of the house. That's the house that we just now just escaped from. Like nothing had helped, he just returns. He's just going to return to it. Hey, wait, what are. Not even having the time to try and stop him, Toru opens the door and disappears into the house. <laughs> and before my very eyes, the entryway door closes again. No way. Why? And those were the last words I spoke in that world. So just like that, I get eaten, swallowed up by the space-time gate connected to my previous world. In the end, Toru returned into that house. That's the final destination for someone who's been swallowed up by the pleasures of the dark arts. Perhaps. Yeah, if you've played Succubus Prison, that's pretty uh, faithful to the mood of the game. Hmm. That hero or whatever returned to his original world, did he? Geez, it seems like I just missed him. Kuyashi Inoka. Chibi. <clears throat> to think he wasn't there to try and take my life at all, but to save those two humans. Hmm. 
But he and I, one day, somewhere, are going to get are going to meet again, I get the feeling. When the time comes, I'll give him proper thanks, won't I? <laughs> Ah, just one more thing I have to look forward to. Venom, you're a funny girl. Achievement, Promisteen's Gate. I've returned. Welcome back, Luca. Hey, look at the time. The current time is... Five... Ten. When it became five, time would loop. And we've experienced this so many times. A phenomenon like a curse. But finally we've broken out of it. And just like it's supposed and just like it's some kind of normal thing, time is progressing past five o'clock. We did it! We did it! No ja. We did it, we did it. Yeah, you helped too, Pro uh, Frederica. What's with this festival ruckus? The, the festival is going to start going forward here. So, we got out of this uh, time loop. Over and over again, we went through the same time frame, and finally we've solved it. And five o'clock was the time we were departing for Yamatai Village. We're going to be participating in the evening festival, and we head for the village. But I've had enough of really long recording sessions, so I'm going to cut out here. Thanks for watching. And you can uh, use my videos to get through that loop if you need it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.